do that. All right. Um, then um, you will see a picture of Laurel lighting a candle at home. And if you have a candle near you at home, you want, might want to light your own candle. We light candles as a reminder that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome and that the Holy Spirit illumines our path and lights our lives to hope. And so as we begin our worship, I invite you to take a few deep breaths, filling your lungs with the joy and glory of living in this new day that the Lord has made. As we offer our hearts to God, let us come to God with praise. Grace and peace and welcome in the name of Christ to the worship of the community of Clifton Presbyterian Church, whether you are here at our Zoom gathering or watching on our website or through Facebook. We are so glad that although we might be separated by distance or time, yet we are unified through the grace of the Holy Spirit. I am Pastor Diane Walton Hendricks and you will be hearing from me along with um, from Bill Watts, who is serving as our liturgist this morning. And of course, you will be hearing from our virtual choir, ably led and edited by our director of music, John Kim. And our soloist leading us on the hymns this morning is Hannah Harris. So in your own space, in your own room at home, Please join as Bill leads us in the responsive call to worship and prayer, which will be followed by the opening hymn. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You, O oh Lord, are our strength and redeemer. Now let us pray together. Faithful God, you sent your incarnate word as the sun of justice to shine upon all the world. Open our eyes to see your gracious hand in all your works that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness, 
for the sake of the one through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. The burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Bill will continue to lead us in the call to confession, the prayer of confession, and the assurance of God's grace. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were wandering from God, even before we knew we needed it, Christ died for us. Because we trust in what God has done in Christ, we dare to come to God in prayer, confident that God already knows and loves us. Let us pray. God of grace, in Christ you have made us your own, but too often we have found our identity, sense of worth, and purpose in the ways of the world instead of in you. Forgive us when we have failed to love others as you have loved us. Forgive us when we have wasted your gifts and held tight to what we might have shared. Forgive us when we have feared those who are strange to us and ignored those in need. Forgive us when we have lost heart and forgotten to hope. Open us to trust more deeply in you, sharing everything in our hearts. Let's take a few, a small time for silence in our personal prayers. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The psalmist reminds us the Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. We trust that we are forgiven, loved, and freed to live a new life in God. Thanks be to God. Because we have been offered that grace in Christ, we can trust that God will use us to fulfill God's longings, to sing through us to the world around us. Let us be reminded of that as the virtual choir author offers the anthem.
God's grace flows into our hearts and then out into the world. Share Christ's love and forgiveness with those who are nearby to you and offer hopes of peace for those who are far off and consider how you might be a part of God's peace flowing out into the world around you. And Jesus reminds us that we have freely received God's love. And so we are welcomed into a life of generosity. You can support the vital work that continues at CPC through your financial giving by donating online through the CPC website or by mailing your donation to the church. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us return to God the offerings of our life. Join Bill in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Thank you God for all that you have given to us. Especially we thank you for the gift of new life in Christ. Use our lives and use the gifts that we share in feeding the world with your love. Until your coming new day when all know your grace, all have enough and all are welcomed in. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now join Hannah in singing, Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we might be led in your truth and taught your way. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. As I mentioned last week, Paul wrote the letter to Romans as a way to introduce himself to the church that had already been established there, for he was hoping to join them for a period of time as he traveled on his missionary journey to Spain. Last week, I preached on the introduction to the letter, which Paul adapted from the common form of letter writing in the day. And in this section, today's scripture passage, Paul describes his desire to join his gifts to the gifts of the community of Rome, that they might strengthen and be strengthened by one another and together serve their common calling proclaiming the gospel of Christ. With that background, listen now to the word of the Lord. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his son, is my witness that Without ceasing, I remember you always in my prayers, asking that by God's will, I may somehow at last succeed in coming to you. For I am longing to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as I have among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. 
Hence, my eagerness to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The beloved folk story, Stone Soup, which is told by different cultures in different ways all throughout the globe, tells the tale of a hungry traveler or group of travelers who arrive at a village looking for something to eat. The villagers, impoverished themselves, refuse to lend aid, for they worry that they don't have enough even for themselves. The traveler then promises to make stone soup, a magical recipe that requires nothing but a huge pot, a lot of water, and some large stones. Once those items are collected, the stranger insists that it won't be long until everyone in the village enjoys a huge feast. Of course, the chef mentions, the stone soup would be better if it had just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. But no matter, no matter, it will still be delicious. One of the villagers pipes up and says, well, I have a little salt and pepper I can share. So they, that is promptly added to the pot. And after that, the chef adds that the soup would be really delicious if only they had some carrots, but no matter, no matter, it will be delightful anyway. And another villager pipes up that she has a few carrots, she can share those, and they're promptly added into the pot. Then the traveler mentions that potatoes, potatoes really make the soup delicious. And another villager adds some of those to the pot and on and on and on it goes. Each villager supplying just a bit of something, not really very much on its own, until finally there is a bowl of soup big enough to feed the entire village, including the weary traveler. It is a magical story about the power of community to provide what is needed when we freely share what we have. The Apostle Paul seems to know a churchy version of the stone soup recipe that when we as a community of faith open ourselves, sharing freely from the gifts that God has given us, we can accomplish God's mission. We can fulfill our gospel purpose. I am longing to see you, writes the Apostle Paul, so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather, so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Paul recognizes that we each are given gifts, talents, resources that are not sufficient to accomplish what is needed in the world alone, but together they are enough. His understanding of spiritual gifts is deep and rich and has informed through the ages how we in the church organize ourselves and view the world around us. But Paul's perspective that is so deeply communal, that emphasizes our interdependence and mutuality with each other and with God, is a strange and even countercultural way of viewing the world in our individualistic consumer society. 
The version of stone soup that I know the best is the one written and illustrated in 1947 by Marcia Brown. The picture on the slide is from that version in which the citizens of the village not only fail to share what they have with the hungry travelers, they in fact plan with each other in advance that they're gonna hide any goods that they have. So afraid are they that what little they have, that even that will be taken from them. It feels strangely relevant to me today. We may not have strangers knocking at our doors asking for food, but I pull up to a busy intersection and there is often someone standing there holding a sign asking for help. I open up my Facebook feed and read story after story of those in need. There are endless emails asking for assistance for worthy causes, texts asking if I plan to vote and when I say I already have the question, would I be willing to take some time to educate others? There are so many needs and there is so much pain, but there are only so many dollars in the bank account and only so many hours in the day. I often feel in the words of an old friend, like too little butter spread over too much toast. I have heard the same from some of you, especially those of you who are parents of school aged children trying to both do your job and act as teacher and tech support. There are so many demands upon time and resources. It is easy to be overwhelmed and either try to do everything and burn out or believe that my small part can never make a real difference in the world and become jaded and apathetic. Paul writes, I am longing to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So that we may be mutually encouraged. The Apostle Paul reminds us that in Jesus Christ, we are not alone, that we have been given a gift of community. And in a community, when you are weary, then he can come and give you an arm to rest upon. When you are lonely, then she can sit beside you and be your companion. If he trips and stumbles, she can catch him or lend comfort in the pain that follows. When she is afraid of what is to come, then he can stand by, for it is always easier to be brave with someone standing beside you. Now, we as a church are not able in this time of physical distancing to be community in the same way that we always have been in the past. It's hard. And I have heard some of you say, I'm sick of it. I just want this to be over. And I understand the sentiment. I am thrilled to be your new pastor, but I never would have imagined that I would not be greeting my new congregation at the door to the sanctuary after worship or smiling and shaking the hands of employees at the restaurants and stores in the village when I introduce myself as the new pastor of Clifton Presbyterian Church. But even though we might not be able to be with each other and offer care for one another as community in the ways that we always have, we still can connect. 
I have been so heartened by the overwhelming response to my I opportunity to meet you on the court. Not for too long, and with face masks on and distancing observed. And I have also been deeply gratified to witness the depth of sharing on Zoom in Bible studies, committee meetings, and in prayer groups. Not to mention our time of caring and sharing immediately following the service. And I am encouraged by the outside of the box thinking of the Christian education group, delivering spiritual growth packages right to the doors of our families. And I know that you are calling one another and checking in on one another. These are all ways that we as a community can, in Paul's words, mutually encourage each other, even in these hard times. It doesn't really seem like it could really possibly be enough. I know that's true. My small action, when weighed up against the great needs of the world. But when you add your carrot and I add my onion and they add their cabbage and potatoes and spices, then by God's grace made known to us in the saving life death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can trust that there will be enough to fill us all. And now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ask or ever imagine. To God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. Amen. We'll join together singing, Lord, you give the great commission as Hannah leads us. Lord, you give the great commission, heal the sick and preach the word. Lest the church neglect its mission and the gospel go unheard. Help us witness to your purpose with renewed integrity, with the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry. Let us pray. Oh Christ, we pray for your church, our own congregation and your church throughout the world. May we risk greatly for you, trust greatly in you, relying upon your abiding grace and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a more gracious civil discourse that those who seek to lead might be guided by hope, humility, and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for freedom for all that those who have power and influence might work on behalf of those who suffer at the hands of unjust institutions and systems of oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those dealing with hurricane, flood, or fire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are marginalized or forgotten, prisoners, refugees, the poor, the hungry, those who are abused, that they might see the promise of a better tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or injured, for caregivers, for those who weep and mourn, that they might be sustained and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our own petitions in the silence of our hearts, trusting in your wisdom and compassion. And now as our savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Christians, we know that we are sent into the world to share that love of Christ, to share our carrot or our potato or whatever it is that God has given to us to be a part of God's reconciling work in the world. I'd like to call your attention to a couple of things that are going on in the life of our community as we draw to the end of our worship service. Um, first, remember that next week we have a congregational meeting after worship that is um, for the purpose of electing Joyce Roroma Monke to the possession of elder for communication. Shouldn't take too long. It'll be just a few moments. So that's gonna happen next week after worship. And also next week during our caring and sharing time, um, we'll celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries and any other milestones um, that are occurring in our congregation this month. And so if you have one of those, in October, then um, we don't want to miss it. So make sure that you send into the office any anything that you want to celebrate next week. Try and do that by Wednesday so we can get our act together in the office and, and celebrate all that is going on in our lives. Um, and I think Mark Reimers is going to share a minute for mission. Mark? Yes, good morning. Uh, first of all, you need to read the weekly uh, notice that we received each week because we have in more detail some of the items that I'll cover. We of course had a very successful fill the truck and we also received donations towards WFCM of $1,500 that will help fill in the gaps. Uh, if you look on that page, you'll also notice that we are asking people to consider already uh, helping to support WFCM in their food basket program that we do each year at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, it's slightly different this year and we won't be delivering ourselves directly, but we'll be supporting WFCM in, in that delivery. So if you look on that page three, you'll be able to see the details of that and how you can contribute and Marcia Stedman uh, needs to have some notice of people would like to make a special contribution. And then on that same page three, you'll see the advance notice with regard to uh, our crop walk. It'll be a virtual crop walk this year. 
and each church plans their own. And you have the details there from Louisha. She's already planning for us as a church to take a walk uh, in a safe area along a trail. And so we want to plan for that. And then I also want to mention that we have from uh, the director of the preschool and Louisha uh, sort of an update on a very active program that we have at the church for preschool. The preschool just completed their uh, fourth full week. They have 26 students ages two and a half to five years old and a staff of five. Uh, the kids are doing great uh, wearing their face mask and that's working well. And the teachers and students and parents are all thankful to be back at school. And, we, and they appreciate the support they received from the church and the help we did with the playground. And that's an active program during uh, Monday through Friday during the main part of the day. So as, as we look ahead, that's a good continuing effort. And then I would just close on Thanksgiving for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize to go to the World Food Program. And if you've watched your news and you see the, <laughs> the man who's in charge of that has to double his contributions over the next few weeks in order to meet the needs this year. Uh, but he's a very hopeful man and it's a good news. So thanks be to God. Thanks, Mark. That's wonderful. Um, also, I wanted to remind you, we've had some of the um, numbers of the COVID-19 cases are encouraging in our in our area. And so you'll be receiving an email, um, to, should be coming tomorrow, um, about some updated um, policies about um, meetings in the church building. So look, watch your email for that coming up this week. And we are a people who are sent and we ring and sing, the spirit sings and rings through our lives. So let's hear the ringing of our bell. Wherever you go this week, consider that God is sending you there. Wherever you find yourself this week, consider that God is placing you there so that the love of Christ, which dwells in your heart, can reach out to the world around you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And will lead us in the benediction response. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness.